Forewarned, Forearmed, Episode 9. Uh, today's episode is a bit of a special one. We're going to jump into the deep end straight away, I guess, and uh, have a preview of the new NATO book. Uh, NATO book is quite interesting. It comes out in October, uh, 7th October, so get your pre-orders in if you haven't already pre-ordered. Uh, if you do need a pre-order in Australia, you do have a great company called the Battle Bunker. Uh, we'll put up a link for them. Uh, good prices, good selection um, if you want to get your NATO pre-orders in Australia. However, the NATO book itself is quite hefty, coming in at 160 pages. Uh, it has some new upgrades for certain few units, as well as new formations for existing nations that are already in free nations from previous V1. And then you actually have a new nation itself in the Belgians. So let's start off and jump straight in and have a look at the Canadians. So the Canadians get a really good boost in this new book. So you start off with their basic formations that they had from Free Nations, which was the, the Leopard and the Mechanized uh, formations. But now they get an additional five new formations, which is quite hefty and quite the boost to Canadians. Uh, some things to point out for note is they also get a new allied support option in the form of the Brits as well, which is also nice to have. Um, those also with those support options from other nations, they do get upgrades to them as well in regards to updates. So it's like no longer do you just miss out on things like uh, Apache and M1A1s for the US support now for Americans, for the Canadians. And then... West Germans stay pretty much the same uh, for the Canadian support, um, but you do get the added bonus of British support as well, though, so that gives you access to the tow links, Harriers, infantry, and tank support from the Brits. Now, let's start looking at the formations for the Canadians. Uh, the Canadians do have some really good formation options now in the form of the Leopard 2, uh, much added boost for them in regards to armour. So you no longer have to take swarms of Leopard 1s uh, for Canadian armour. Uh, you now have the Leopard 2, which means you can make a more elite uh, force for the Canadians. Even though the Canadians didn't get their Leopards till roughly the same time as the Australians in 2007, uh, going by the timeline here, it's like they're replacing losses. So unlike the Australians who went with the US M1A1 in this book, uh, the Canadians have gone with the Leopard 2. So... The Leopard 2 formation is exactly the same as the Leopard 1 formation. The only difference is you get Leopard 2s. Um, so they, they're still quite nice. Still have similar stats to their West German counterparts. However, I think that they do benefit from a few additional stats uh, in regards to certain things. Um, over the, the West Germans still retain. Um, example, maybe their courage, I think, is a little bit better for the West Germans. Um, but other than that, the Leopard 2 is a nice addition to the Canadians. I, I really like the fact that they do get the option for that. Um, you also do get other units as well that are added to it. So you do get the Toe Under Armour. Uh, and there's additional tank support for AT, which is good. Um, so you can swap out your Toe M113s for a little bit more better with the Hammerhead. So I, I'd probably look at maybe upgrading to go over the Toe regular for that. Um, moving on. So no change to really to the Leopard 1 squadrons. They're still the same that they've always been. So if you still want to play the, the Horde uh, for Canadians, you do have that option. Uh, you just have those added extras in regards to the Toe Under Armour and the Coyote um, Reach Patrols there as well. Um, so decent units for Recce in regards to that. Uh, so it does give you a little bit more benefit, especially with the anti-helicopter on the Coyotes as well. Uh, mech inventory is still the same again as what they were previously in Free Nations. The only difference is you actually get the Erics for the Canadians, which is a good boost for their AT. Uh, and then you also get the Toe Under Armour. Now this is a really tough decision, I think, if you're a Canadian player, is if you want to upgrade your Charlie G's or Kugelstoff's, um to Erics. They are a point upgrade. However, I think if you go for the Toe Under Armors, which do carry the Toe 2, it kind of makes it that cost-effective way where you may have to choose between 
uh, keeping your Charlie G's for a little bit more offensive in assault because if you do upgrade them, you're only there with your 66s or M72s, um, which does make it a bit trickier, especially if you're going to lose like that AT17 from the Charlie G's. Um, however, you do get a bit of a punch with the Eric's up to AT24, so it's great for defensive fire, but if you are pinned, it does make it a bit more difficult, so you do lose that. I'd probably look if I was playing Canadians, I'd probably take one platoon with Eric's um, to either support another platoon and then probably take a lot of toe 2 um, under armors as upgrades. Uh, considering you have the three, I'd say that's probably the better option. So then you go on to the home front for the Canadians as part of the Red Dawn expansion that came out a while back. Uh, so you did have that cabot in there where the Canadians also got invaded as part of that. So you do get a couple of new formations f for that in part of the NATO book. So those formations are the Cougar and the Coyote Armoured Squadrons. They basically are the same as the Leopard 1 and Leopard 2 formations in regards to layout. Uh, the only big difference is you get the choice between the Grizzly Mech and the M113. Uh, mech infantry for them. Uh, it is worth noting that both of these, um, that the armoured troops for both these don't have spearhead, so that is one thing to be considerate of, I think, of these units, is you don't have spearhead on any of these, so if you do want dedicated Ricky troops in there, uh, you're looking at either the Lynx or the Coyote patrols for that. Um, but still, you do get the anti-helicopter on the Coyote, uh, and then the same for the nice 76 mil on the Cougar, which is quite good at taking out, you know, BMPs and other smaller, lighter AFEs out there, which is a good option to them, I think, as well. Uh, moving along, you got the Mech, Grizzly Mech. Now, the Grizzly Mech is the same layout as the 113 Mech, infantry as well. The only difference is your platoon sizes are a little bit different uh, laid out. So you only get the one Charlie G with these. So I'd say upgrading for the Erex is pretty much maybe looking at it just to bring it up a little bit, just give it an extra bit of punch, um, especially as a support unit. But it, it's a nice addition. I find it quite nice to add. And then if you want, you've also got the Recce patrols in the form of the Coyote, which is your other spearhead unit, uh, other than the Lynx. So, I, I think if I was to choose between the Lynx and the Coyote, I'd probably go the Coyote just for the anti helo um, ability and a bit more ability to it. Even though the Lynx has probably got a little bit more better armor on it. And that brings us to our last formation for the Canadians, which is their Airborne. Uh, so this is quite a nice addition to the Canadians in the form of the Airborne troops. Uh, it gives us quite a large infantry formation to use. The platoon sizes are quite nice as well. Again, you do get that option to upgrade them. Uh, however, the, the mortar that they generally have within the other units, you actually have to add it in for an extra point. Um, so unless you really want that extra team, you don't have to take it. But you can upgrade to have two GPM teams, which is quite nice as well. So quite a bit of firepower in regards to the airborne teams with a bit of punch so they can definitely sit on an objective and lay down a lot of fire in that form. You also get like the one of the few units that have come out in regards to man pack units is the 81 mortars as well which is quite a nice addition uh, and the same with the 50 cal HMG platoon as well so it's nice to have a couple of units that aren't regularly mounted in vehicles or mounted on vehicles as well so that's quite nice. Uh, the other ones that you've got is also the little Lissus Jeeps as well, which is quite a nice addition to them. Um, again, just be wary, they don't have any assault or counter attack, so if you do get into a pinch and do get assaulted, you will be running away quite often with those, or you will lose them as well, uh, just for the pure fact that they are very lightly armoured, and not to mention there's only two of them as well, so definitely a uh, good unit to have if you want some cheap 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 support for your airborne units but again quite small 
So that rounds out the Canadians quite nicely, I think, with the airborne units as their last formation. Uh, next nation in our list is the French. So the French get some nice boosts this time around with a couple of added uh, formations in the form of the Leclerc, Tank Squadron, and the VBL Squadron as well. Um, I think this is quite an additional nice couple of formations to add to the French, uh, especially with the Leclerc. It does give it a quite boost when it comes to armor over the AMX 30s. So you do have some nice options, including Hot 2. Uh, so that's good to note, especially with some of their support options, especially with the Mephistos. So and their helos as well. So you can upgrade them, which is also good to note. Uh, just be warned though, if you do take them, you've got to take all of them. Uh, that's the same for the Milan 2 as well. Uh, so the Leclerc formation is quite beefy. Uh, quite a small formation, and the fact you've only got four units to choose from, including HQ. Um, but I'm glad that they did add the MX-30 platoon in there uh, as your second option for a formation, just because of the points cost of Leclerc. Um, points cost of Leclerc is quite expensive, it puts it up there as one of the highest points costs per tank, uh, but it is quite beefy as well, it does have some really good stats, however do note that it does have Morel 5, so if you're testing for last stand, it's more likely your tanks are going to run, um, which makes it very, very tricky if you only want to run min units of this, um, basically it's because if you test or bail one, if they're not remounting, you're testing on a 5 to get back in. So it does make it a very cost-effective unit, but it also means a lot of your points can run away very quickly as well if they get bailed, especially if they're side armor of 8. So that, that's something to keep in mind if you are choosing Leclerc uh, for French, just to be careful of um, things that can hit you in the side that don't have heat that are either AT-12 and above. Um, so things like the Marta 2 with the 50s, upgrade on them, if they go on the side they're going to hurt real bad um, and that can be really a dampener to your large expensive tanks, French. Uh, no change to the AMX-30 squadron, um, basically it's the same as Free Nations so it's still pretty good bang for buck there if you still want to play AMX-30s. Uh, AMX-10 infantry, so you do get the option of Hazard of Claire as part of your sport options as well, you still get the four units to choose from. Uh, one of the big options for this one is the addition of having both the Erex and Milan 2. So you sort of like got to weigh up the cost. It's like, do you still keep the Laric or do you keep a Laric, keep a, a Peerless and upgrade to all of them to Erex? So you have two Erex and then maybe Milan starts making a very expensive unit very quickly. Um, but I think for me, I'd probably like sit there maybe keep one Erex and one Apelis, and then maybe look at maybe upgrading to Milan 2 for some extra punch. So at least that way, because those AT grenades are still quite nice, the fact that they're 13. Um, so even with them, they can get rid of some, you know, smaller, lightly armored vehicles quite easily with them um, over the Laric, um, which is basically really a, a Charlie G in all respects. Um, but my best bet would probably upgrade one of each of Apelis and Eric's just way that way you've got you know something that can hit back pretty hard in assault if needed uh, and then you've also got something that can hit pretty hard in defensive fire as well so that's my take on the AMX-10 infantry moving along you've got the updated AMX-10 RC platoon so you do get the added addition of the VBL um, vehicles in here now these are the armoured VBLs, unlike the um, other versions, which I think may be unarmoured. I'll check with that later, don't count me on that one. But it's handy to note that the AMX-10's RCs do lose spearhead. So, no longer are French players paying, you know, a, a hefty chunk for a reconnaissance unit now. They, they don't have to do that anymore, so your recce units are a lot cheaper, which is good. Um, because your VBLs are now going to be your primary um, spearhead units or your recce units out there. So uh, if you do take this formation, just remember that 
that is one of the biggest changes I think in this book is just certain units have lost some abilities and the AMX 10RC was one of those that did lose Spearhead. Um, but the VBLs, they're quite nice. You do get a Peerless on them. Um, so with this formation, you get them in groups of three, which is quite nice. I think that is good, the fact that they do have groups of three rather than groups of two with this formation, just for the pure fact that... Um, you know, if you do lose one, you are testing, and that 5 plus real does really hurt the French quite a bit, I think, when you are coming down to the last stand. However, the ability to upgrade with Eric's is quite nice. Um, I, I think if I was going to take this, I probably would take this, but in support of, say, something like an infantry formation, uh, just for the pure fact I can have those VBLs behind my infantry units um, for defensive fire, um, because they can't be pinned. So that's a good thing to note is vehicles, especially armoured vehicles, can't be pinned. So upgrading from a peerless to Eric's is a no-brainer for me. Yes, they're going to be stationary, but if I'm putting them behind my infantry as a defensive screen, I think that's a no-brainer, and that's probably where I'd probably most likely do it with my infantry, with that, with the French. Uh, and then you've got the VBL um, squadron, so you, the recce squadron for French, uh, which is good. So, same deal, similar to the VBLs in with the AMX 10RCs. Uh, the only difference is they come in twos, uh, which is a slight smaller thing, but I think if you wanted an actual, you know, cheap recce unit, then you've got them in here with the VBLs. As, as they, they're nearly on par with most of the other recce units for all the other nations, which is good. Um, so, no longer do you pay, you know, an exorbitant amount of, like, points for recce units for French anymore, which is great. So you also get the option of having the VBL Milan. Uh, I, I think, you know, upgrading to the Milan 2 is probably a no-brainer for this unit. Um, but just be warned, if you, if you do do that, you've got to do it for the rest of your units. So if you do have Milans elsewhere, you've got to upgrade them and pay that tax. Um, so don't forget it's a one-point upgrade for Milan 2. Um, so that's one of the other things that this book does do, is upgrade a few certain things, but we'll talk about that later. And then the VARB company also is quite interesting it does get quite the formation change like you no longer have to change or choose between either the Milan or the tank support which is great it's now added in there um, which is awesome you also have some mortars which is great too so um, I think the VARB infantry company is actually quite a really good decent infantry unit now um, like the AMX-10 infantry may have a bit more with the Milans and Eric's to choose from, but I think with with the guards to this, it's like, it, it becomes a no-brainer, really, I think, if you're going to play French now to play the Vibe infantry, just for the pure fact that you get a lot more formation support, you make that formation bigger. Um, it's no longer a four-unit formation, it's now close to, like, eight, which is great. Um... And you also get to upgrade your VARB transports within your infantry formation with the VARB T20s as well. So you get a bit more added punch as well, and also anti-helicopter as well on those as well, which is great. And I think that's a good addition to the VARB. And one of the new units I like is the Manpact 120s on them as well. So you do get 120mm mortars, so very good mortar unit as well. Very cheapish um, compared to most other artillery units out there. Bit expensive, I think, compared to say 81s or other types of mortars like the 107. Um, but still, it's it's quite a nice addition to have that within a formation, especially with the French. Uh, additional things for the French is, of course, their support options. You now get the Elmira, um, which is also good to note as well. Um, and again, with the Hot, is also quite a bit of an upgrade too. Don't forget with the French. Moving on. Um, the, f the nation that used it this year's nationals to win that event was the Dutch. So I'm very excited about the Dutch updates in the new NATO book. I, I think it's quite interesting to see them. They do get a lot more punch, especially in their formations now, uh, with the 2A5 for the Leopard 2. Um, so that's quite nice to have, uh, especially now that you can have that in support of your other units, which is great. So you can have a bit more of a beefier tank, which would be quite nice to have too. And you also get the added bonus of either, um, instead of taking the par, you've also got two units of 
catch and shoot shot. I think that's a, a good one as well. So you, if you didn't want to play tanks and you just wanted a pure infantry force backed up by some really decent helos, uh, I think that's also a good option. And you also do get the MRSs added to the Dutch as well, which is also good. Uh, one of the other things to note is the updates to the Totu or Dragon as well for Dutch. So you do get those as well. So that's actually quite nice to their infantry and anti-tank units as well. Uh, so the Leopard 2 formation is quite beefy. It's very much the same as like the Leopard 2 formation. The only difference is you get two A5s. Uh, I, I still like the fact that you get the two A5s with the Dutch, which is quite nice as well. Um, so it does give them a tank that's quite beefy, and you know you, you do pay uh, a quite a substantial amount of points for these units. But again, it's like with the way Dutch work, you do give quite a bit of air cover, and the infantry are quite still relatively priced to give quite decent support to the 2A5s as well. Uh, no change to the Leopard 2 formation, still the same. The only difference is the uh, Pirates do get that upgrade to TOW 2, and that's the same for both the Leopard 1 squadron as well, which is no change either. Still that upgrade to the AT units. Uh, Dutch infantry, no changes there, except for the addition of the 120 um, man pack mortar similar to the French. And you also get Dragon 2 for them as well, and the update for their AT as well for the Toe 2. So there's no real big changes for the Dutch except for a couple of really nice upgrades, which is good. And I think that really helps them give a bit more punch. Because um, I remember playing in the Nationals with them, and it was tricky coming across a certain bunch of things with only Dragons and Toe 1. So it was very hard trying to pick your fights because it's like if people were using T80s or even Mater 2s, you you had to sort of like get around them and shoot in the sides with your infantry or other units, especially with PTRLs, I took nine of them and that's what I used to basically take out a lot of the minor twos was because of the AT-11 that didn't have to worry about the Chauvin one. Um, so I, I think that's a really good punch to the Dutch and good upgrades with them. So now at least they've got a bit more AT support. So I think that's a good upgrade for the Dutch. And still no change to the Ricky Squadron either. Um, it's basically the same as it always has been. The only difference is, I think, you do get to upgrade your Dragon teams if they have any Dragon teams, which they don't. Next nation up is where I come from, the land down under. Um, I'm really looking forward to the updates for the Anzac lists. Um, not only do you get three new formations but you also get the updates to the British allied support which is also good um, I think this is really great great sorry um, the fact that you do get MRS and Challenger you do get those added as part of the British support I think that's really great because great because it does give the addition of um, some really decent artillery units that you can now use for the Anzac lists uh, one thing to note now is you no longer can take the two Scorpion uh, recce units um, that the New Zealanders had as their support formation support, it's now actually part of the squadron. So if you do want to take a Scorpion troop, they're now part of your black box choices um, to make. So moving along uh, with the Anzacs, let's see what we get. So the Leopard 1 squadron, the big change there is the M1 edition. So you do get that now added into the formation. So I think having the M1 is a great change for the Leopard ones, uh, especially because you can take two troops if required or just the one as a support option, which is good. So you don't have to take two Leopard ones, so you can just take the one plus the HQ, which is great. Uh, the other change also is the Lav as a recce unit instead of the 113 reccees, which is quite nice as well. So that's the big changes there. Um, I, I think the M1 is a great addition, especially considering its skill. Um, so if you were an American player, I think you'd be pretty sore at this. Um, but yeah, it's a great addition to the Anzacs or the Aussies in this list. Uh, the infantry for the Aussies, no real change except for those two changes with the formation itself to the updates. So you do get the option of the M1 or the as labs or labs as they call them here um, and the biggest update also to them is the fact that you get Milan 2 for their AT units which is quite nice it's a good punch to the 
Anzac lists uh, gives them that much AT support that they really sorely needed. So I really like those changes for the Aussies. Now, this is the quite the interesting one, which is the trial squadron or the lab trial squadron um, that the Aussies get. This is quite a decent formation in the fact that you do get three troops of labs, the mortars, Milans, and the assault troop. Um, plus, you also get the added bonus of tank support, either in the Leopard or the M1. I think if you're a US player, you'd be pretty sore about this, especially if you compared it to your lab formation. Um, I think if you're a US player and you wanted labs, you'd be definitely looking at taking the Australian version as an allied support, purely on the fact that all the Australian stuff is skill free plus. Um, and then on top of that, you also get better mortar support and better AT support in the form of one too. Yes, you do have Hammerhead on those toes um, in the labs, but I, I think that extra punch for the AT24 is probably a lot better uh, as a US player to have rather than not have. So that's my take on the labs. And that's the same for the M13 Cav, which is the same setup. The only difference is I'm glad that they have added the second MRV as per Doctrine, which is per the MLW Reconnaissance Regiment from 1983 um, PAM. So I'm glad that they've included that, um, which gives you a variety of choice for those units now. Uh, point to note, though, you've lost Brutal and Sneak and Peek on the MRVs. So... Just remember that, they're no longer brutal, which is a shame, because I really like the fact that they were brutal in V1, where you could, you know, go up to an infantry unit, especially in support of an infantry unit, and pull up a really great assault by using the MRVs to target things that would hurt the infantry assault, um, and especially with brutal, where we would force those rerolls of saves. But, unfortunately, you lose that, but you gain a second uh, MRV. Our Kiwi brethren get their own formation. I, I think this is a good thing for them. Um, they get their own Scorpion formation. So I, I think that's good for the Kiwis, you know. But it means if you did want to take those two, you know, Scorpion armoured troops now, you no longer can. So that's, you have to take the formation. But I think if you're a, a Kiwi or a key, keen Kiwi player, you can now actually have your own dedicated um formations, which is great, especially if you wanted to represent a New Zealand army. Let's talk about this bad boy. Um, the Skyhawk. Or, I like to call it the Doomhawk. Uh, it is the utility belt of the air wing. It comes with everything you could possibly want on an aircraft. So this aircraft comes with everything you can get. Uh, bombs, rockets, and you can even upgrade them to have the Maverick. So it makes them quite a potent air support unit, uh, especially for your CAS abilities for Anzacs. Um, traditionally, the New Zealanders fly these, and the Australian Navy did have them back in the day. Uh, however, this is basically covered under the New Zealand aspect, so I'm, I'm really great that they're added in here, for especially for Anzacs. I would have preferred F-111s myself, personally, but meh. Uh, you still get the option of having the Harriers. So I think in some games, it's like, you know, the Harrier is quite nice. However, the Skyhawk does have those Mavericks' ability to be upgraded on them, so... I think I'd personally take the Skyhawk over the Harriers just for that pure fact. Like, you do lose that really lovely Salvo template the Harriers get, but you gain the fact that you can either use a Salvo template. Yes, it's reduced in firepower and AT, but it would be great for going up against infantry. It's not a one-shot weapon either, so you can repeatedly use it. And that's the same with the artillery, um, with the bombs on it as well, with the template there, which would be really great against... Uh, anything that's top armor zero, uh, especially considering it's firepower two plus. So that's my take on the Doomhawk, as I like to call it. Last but not least is the Belgians. Uh, the Belgians are a new nation added in to this book. 
I think they bring quite a few interesting things to their lists. Um, they're very much like a, a Dutch-British amalgamation style force. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how they play out uh, on the, the table. You do get the Leopard 1 formation, and then you also get the Infantry formation, and you do get their Recce formation, or their Reconnaissance formation, which is basically a Brit um, Scorpion slash Scimitar squadron, um, which is great, because you do get the Strikers as part of that. And then you get their West German and British support, which is still nice as well. So I, I think you do get some added bonuses in there. I would probably look at maybe taking their Infantry with probably like Challenger, um, support um, that way you've actually got some beefy tanks rather than have leopard ones um, just for pure added armor um, especially if you're looking at 100 points like you can fill up their units quite easily with their cheapish infantry um, and then yeah so the leopard one formation is quite nice you do get you know a similar formation to the dutch where you get the same thing the only difference is you don't have any AT on this as well um, but you do get like you know Gepids it's their formation support so it's like it's a no brainer taking Gepids their infantry they do get similar styles of the Dutch the only difference is they don't get um, air cover or air AA for this which is pretty eh uh, but other than that, they're not too bad. Their infantry are very similar to the French. Uh, the only difference is they, they lack their AT support, so you've actually got to pay extra for them. So it's like a little bit extra. But you do get the Canyon, uh, Yarg, Panzer, Anti-Tank, and Milan AT, which is also nice, because those Milan A can be upgraded to Milan 2, which is nice. Uh, so that's the... Belgian's main two formations, but their Reiki Squadron, I think, is where they really shine. Um, for the pure fact, you get basically the Brit formation, but slightly a little bit of a uh, downgrade with their skill and a few other things, but at least you get strikers, so that's quite nice addition to that. And then you get some really decent support formation form as well. So, I hope you enjoyed the preview of the new NATO book. Uh, and my thoughts of it, and some of the new things, and some of the old things, and updates for it. I think this book's going to be really great to change certain aspects of the game. It will be a bit of a meta shift, but I think once it all dies down, and people learn how to play their lists, and counter those lists, especially for people who will upgrade to Milan 2, or Dragon 2, or Hot 2, uh, I think it'll be a, a good challenge for certain people, and will bring a lot more aspect to the game. Um, in that regard so if you like this video please like and subscribe and I hope to see you again sooner or later for another video until then good hunting